Newcastle for the distinctive frigate bus was appropriately the Newcastle permanent head office in King Street where the campaign to fill it in for the frigates was launched. And even as the minutes before departure ticked away, some were adding their names to what must surely be the most popular bus in the Hunter's history. And its load also sets this bus apart. Those well-handled petitions, of course, were first priority, the honour of adding the final box going to the man who came up with the idea in the first place. We'll present it to Canberra and hopefully bring back the goodies. The delegation accompanying the frigate bus to Canberra plans to set up a display in Parliament House presenting visiting politicians with a vision of Newcastle after an AWS win and to encourage the decision makers to stop and ponder the presentation, genuine Hunter Valley refreshments will be on hand. You couldn't be accused of trying to buy support down there, could you? No, just to give them a, a drink and give them good Hunter hospitality. The final signature tally is in excess of 180,000 and Canberra delegates were this morning singing the praises of those who included their names in the total. They've pulled their weight, they got in behind the team and uh, most of us are now feeling very good and very confident. We're absolutely delighted, it's more than we'd ever expected to have achieved. Um, we think Newcastle and the Hunter and the Manning have um, done us proud. After last minute photos to record the moment, the doors finally closed on the frigate campaign in the Hunter. The contingent travelling to Parliament House includes a number of advertising consultants who will be working to create the maximum effect when the buses reach camp. Ross Hampton, NBN News. The country players today put the finishing touches to their preparations, winding up with a hard workout and devising forward tactics. We're well aware that their strength is in their forwards, but uh, we believe as this is their Wednesday game, uh, they probably will play it a little bit wider than the, the main test matches. The first 20 minutes is going to tell a story. Uh, if we can hang in there for the first 20 minutes, we believe that uh, we can keep pace with the Lions for the rest of the game. Throughout the three days the countryside has been in training camp at Carryong near Gosford, team manager Austin Richardson says they have concentrated on just one idea, defeating the Brits before the last test match. Absolutely, and uh, all the fellas are quite well aware of that and quite confident. We, we appreciate we'll be the underdogs, but uh, that's the way it goes. Included in the country lineup to take on the Lions at Newcastle number two oval tomorrow afternoon will be local sensation Danny McCarve and Central Coast fullback Mark Hamling. Inside the council building, the Premier appeared unruffled despite the noisy welcome by protesters. I thought it was very friendly actually, yeah. Nice to be here. And his direct response to the protesters... Oh, I have no idea what the protest meeting said or did. I'm not really very interested. But the Premier did meet with a union delegation and says there will be an announcement on Thursday regarding improved benefits for injured workers. He stands firm on plans for State Rail and Elcom. Nobody in their right mind could support a continuation uh, of the sort of situation of a State Rail Authority, the Electricity Commission. Those organisations are losing hundreds of millions of dollars which the taxpayers of New South Wales have to pay. During today's cabinet meeting, the first for Lake Macquarie, that council presented a submission detailing 11 concerns, including road funding. The government announced it will spend $3.5 million upgrading Cardiff Road between Glendale and Barnsley to have it fully reconstructed by the time the freeway is extended to George Booth Drive in 1993. Council will also get almost half a million dollars of $36 million to be allocated from three cents a litre fuel tax revenue. It'll be the biggest improvement and sustained improvement in road construction both at a council level and at a RTA level that there's been in the history of the Hunter. Other good news from Cabinet was the Water Board will speed up plans to end the discharge of treated sewage into Lake Macquarie. The discharge of treated effluent from the Toronto and Edgeworth plants should end by 1993. 
the $150 million Lake Macquarie sewage scheme will see some treatment plants close, including those at West Walls End, Marmong Point, Windale and Swansea, while tenders to build sewers on the western side of the lake will be called for by the end of the year. Other cabinet announcements included a $10,000 grant for the Lake Council to prepare a local tourism plan, with a preliminary study to be completed in 10 weeks. Cabinet also agreed to discuss plans for Green Point for resolution within six months and the provision of state rail land at Glendale to develop a town centre, possibly to include an administration base. We've indicated specifically for the first time that we're prepared to uh, sell the council the land for a civic administration centre um, at what would amount to a less than market price because of the use as a civic centre um, and that we would be happy to talk about uh, resolution of Green Point. Um, we're not in a position to simply hand it over uh, uh, as an absolute event. But Cabinet today also considered the state's gazumping laws, with legislation to be introduced in Parliament in September. Uh, Cabinet accepted a, um, a range of proposals which would uh, eliminate preliminary agreements, would restore options, would uh, create what amounts to an optional uh, cooling off period of five days, uh, would improve vendor disclosure so the information available at the time of a purchase of vendor getting together would be substantially improved. And we think the package taken as a whole uh, will substantially eliminate uh, the problem. A proven welter performer, Great Vane will relish the return to his home track where he produces his best form. Gary Harley suggests that you link Great Vane with Dusty Sound and Hunter for the trifecta at Ramwick and for the daily double try Oakwood in the first leg and Great Vane in the second. Racing down south tomorrow is at Caulfield and the daily double will be conducted on races six and seven. And Gary's tips are Lucky Poppy and Surrealism. And for the trifecta, one, two and three, Surrealism to beat Demon Fever and Good God. At the Dogs tomorrow in Newcastle, Days Word and Kinjara should win their respective races in the Daily Double and in the trifecta try Kinjara to win from Globetrotter and Peerless Star. Trotting on Saturday night is at Cessnock and Gary feels that Dicey Dealer and Scorn Lee should win the legs of the Daily Double and Dicey Dealer, Casey Mountain and Gladius to fill the placings in the trifecta. Hope you win a mozza. After having spent a week with Melbourne hosts, the girls from Edogawa Senior High School in Tokyo will now spend similar time at Waratah High School. A yeah. welcome by the school's principal yeah. and lunch with some of the students preferring familiar foods from their home country. Regional Education Director Alan Baird made a special trip to meet the students. He says Japan is Australia's major trading partner, rates Japanese language as a vital component of education and says the hunter leads in this area. I really believe that we're well ahead of the rest of Australia. We have Japanese being offered in 70% of our high schools this year and it will be on offer to all of our high schools, I believe, in 1990. He sees this group as representative of future trends. The Japanese want to learn more about Australia the Australians want to do the same about Japan. We can't guarantee something special for every student that studies Japanese, but it's important for Australia that we have as many as possible studying it so that those who eventually will need it have had that opportunity. It's not a library in the normal sense of the word, but a facility to stimulate interest in books among people as young as three. It was relaunched today, housed in a new $40,000 custom-built caravan. The Booker Bar tours outlying areas controlled by the Lake City Council, staying for up to a week at a time, with the youngsters treated to a variety of experiences. Library department staff get involved with puppetry and singing, and all the normal library services like tapes, books and videos. City librarian Veronica Lunn is keen to see libraries deinstitutionalized, uh, and up to 2,000 children each year take advantage of the offer. And the 
objective is that the child who comes to the Bookabara, if that's their first experience with a uh, staff member of the library or with uh, a static library point, that that is a fun experience. While at the same time uh, trying to reinforce that concept of the library as a place where a child can have their informational or recreational needs met. In a bid to protect the environment, make a few dollars and help out the Hunter Life Education Centre, two Lake Macquarie brothers are about to embark on a new venture. Howard and Harold French plan to install 20 of these bright orange drums at service stations throughout Newcastle, Maitland, Lake Macquarie and Port Stephens, enabling backyard mechanics to easily dispose of their waste oil rather than dump it at tips or down sewers or stormwater drains. At least 3% of their gross monthly profit from reselling the waste will be given to the Life Education Centre. What sort of response do you expect from the public? Are they going to be bothered to go along to service stations and use these facilities? With the amount of telephone calls we've been getting uh, here at our office, I'd say, yeah, a lot of people are very, very conscious at the moment of what they do with their waste products. And uh, waste oil is a big problem and, uh, yeah, a lot of people will use it. Mr French says other companies do collect waste oil from bigger users, but he believes his firm is unique to this area with its plans to install tanks at service stations specifically for use by householders. Tanks should be in place at service stations within two weeks. In the meantime, Tiger Oil will collect waste oil from people's homes. We are offering a free home pickup, uh, anything from 4 litres up to 20 litres. Uh, at this stage, we're doing that to get them out of a problem until the service station collection is uh, up and running. Great, thank you. If one sport has come under the microscope more than any other, it's weightlifting. And today, the New South Wales Drug Free Powerlifting Championships were held at the University Gymnasium. With drug testing carried out at the titles, all entrants stressed that this was an event that was truly drug free. And the lifts matched the dedication to training the natural way. Joy Dobson, a silver medalist at the World Drug Free Powerlifting Championships, set an Australian record with a lift of 152.5 kilograms. Joy also recently set a world deadlift record of 192 kgs. And Max Bristow set a new national record in the over 45 division, lifting 190 kilograms in the squat. David Vaughan, another world silver medalist, made his charge at a state title look pretty simple. On the oval adjacent to the gym, Stockton's Linda Garden continued her build up to next year's Commonwealth Games in New Zealand. For Linda, it's frustrating knowing she is so close to the qualifying distance for the long jump. Yes, it is frustrating, but I. I know I could do it, but I just would have liked to have already got it behind me. <laughs> so what's coming With the Australian Institute of Sports satellite meetings in Adelaide and Melbourne, plus inter-club meets in October, there is still plenty of time for the mum of three to qualify. But the real test will come at the selection trials in December. At the trials, are first, second or third pass the post go, so that's it. After that, there's no more chances. <laughs> Like finely tuned athletes, the men and machines lined up for action. Using two furrow mouldboard ploughs, each contestant has to dig a quarter of a hectare of ground in three hours. Judges mark the ploughman for evenness of furrows, burying of stubble, creation of potential seed beds and general appearance. Seven of the men will be selected for the New South Wales team to compete in the nationals. And from that, the best will go on to the World Championships in Holland next year. Fire brigades raced to the Tookley Transport Factory after the alarm was raised. The 40 by 6 metre factory containing general cargo and parcels was billowing thick smoke when the brigades arrived. Some of the firemen needed breathing apparatus. The rear section of the building was severely damaged. However, after an hour, the blaze was under control. With the imminent danger contained, 
Firemen sifted through the mess looking for clues to the fire's cause. The Newcastle Fire Brigade control say following a series of triple O phone calls, they suspect the fire was deliberately lit. Peter Ryan, NBN News. The popularity of the Newcastle Knights rugby league team is now second to none in the Winfield Cup, an incredible achievement for this young club who is only in its second year in the big time. And it's not only at home that you are getting the big crowds, the fanatical followers will travel almost anywhere to watch their boys go round. Last Sunday it was to Arana Park in Campbelltown to play the Western Suburbs Magpies, and what better way to go than by train? So the Knights hierarchy set the wheels in motion and ordered one train to take 800 supporters. As quick as a Steve former break, it was sold out and another one ordered. It too was filled, so 1,600 men, women and children gathered at Broadmeadow Station on a chilly Sunday morning to make the trek to Sydney's west. To help make the journey a little more pleasant, Alan Ward and a group of musicians jazzed along in a party mood and there was plenty of food and the odd ale or two of the right stuff to add to the atmosphere. Though the second train arrived before the first, it didn't really matter as on arrival the throng of blue and red jumpers and banners were met by the night's noble Steve. And the ticket sellers at the gates of Arana Park must have had a heart attack as they looked out from their little cages to catch a glimpse of the approaching horde. After gaining a pleasant welcome and entry to the ground, time to wonder what the day would bring. Would the Knights handle the magpies and hang on to a chance of making the final five? Or would Ellery Hanley and Gary Schofield be too strong? It was a sombre dressing room as Coach Alan McMahon and the Knights of Newcastle prepared for battle. Deathly silence as players' thoughts raced with a task at hand. A win at all costs. The day had been perfect until top prop Mark Sargent was carried from the field with a suspected broken leg, later confirmed as ligament damage. And Mark's front row partner Peter Johnson left the field a short time after with a shoulder injury. The Knights were in strife. Danny Peacock, the long striding fullback for the Maggies, cut through, gave a good ball to centre Jason Stafford who then threw a neat pass to Ellery Hanley and he scooted away to score. West put the issue beyond doubt when Hanley threw the final pass for Wayne Simons to score wide out. But despite the loss to the improving western suburbs, the train trip home was anything but awake. As patrons rolled out their best vocal cords and sang themselves hoarse, even those Knights officials who rued the day the Maggies beat the Knights joined in the festivities to signal a very successful promotion. Residents were warned off the street and neighbourhood traffic was stopped in the small Dawson community as heavily armed SWAS officers searched the area for two bank robbers, at least one of whom was thought to be armed. Using a police tracking dog, given the scent of the robbers at the stolen car they abandoned nearby, the special squad of police followed a trail which led them towards Lake Manmora Power Station. Overhead, observers in the Westpac rescue helicopter and a police helicopter looked for signs of the two teenagers fleeing on foot through the bush. The ship began shortly after midday. The two robbers, aged about 16 and 19, staged an armed hold-up at the Budgiewoy branch of the Westpac Bank, escaping with a large sum of money. As police cars converged on the area, the pair were seen yeah, by two workmen, right. Ray Olsoff yeah, yes. and John yes. Scarra, who gave chase the, in their uh, port loo the line. They were driving like absolute rats along the road, and uh, I just said to John, I said, the this is the car that flew to chase and you can bet on it and uh, we just followed them to see what they'd do and because of the traffic they couldn't get away from the truck and this is where they pulled up. Two young blokes they jumped out and run down there down alongside the fence there then over the fence and we stopped over there and then both of us jumped out and Ray was quicker off the mark than me naturally and uh, he went down there and he sang out don't come any further it looks like they've got a gun. Are they both carrying guns? No I can only see one bloke with it um, I didn't even know whether it was a gun because it, he had something over the top of it, but with the barrel sticking out you, could, you knew it was a gun, and that was enough to deter me. One of the robbers was last seen wearing a yellow shirt and jeans, the other a checked shirt and jeans. Tonight the search has been called off, but police inquiries are continuing.
Now Menjir has made a habit in the past four years of winning crown upon crown. She is the current Pan Pacific champion in the Open and H division, two titles she has held since 1985. This year, Khan will be competing in the Open and 15 to 17 age division and is the raging favourite to win once again. Under the watchful eye of former national gymnastics coach Keith Giddy, Khan went through a series of round offs, whip backs, back flips, and twists at training this afternoon. A demanding sport that puts tremendous pressure on the ankle and knee joints, it's been recognised by the International Olympic Committee but won't be a part of the 1992 Games in Barcelona. Kam is not worried at this stage of her career that tumbling is not in the big time. She has her sights set on defending her titles. And with forms such as yep. this, Kam's in with a big show of doing just that. By the time they set out for Civic Park, the gathering had already heard speakers from the Public Service Association, the Health and Research Employees Union and the Teachers' Federation condemned the Greiner government. President of the state PSA, Janet Good, described his administration as arrogant and anti-unionist. I'd suggest to you we're here to bury Grinder, not to praise him. Let's remember... Grinder the grub, I like that one. That's, um, While the insults kept flowing and the protesters left the workers' club for a march to Civic Park, other workers were doing their best to cause as little disruption to the public as possible. Buses and trains kept running, but fares weren't collected. Enough electricity was still being generated, but hospitals operated only emergency services and state schools were closed. All anger was directed at the Premier. milder break in the weather enabled a brief rally to take place in the park where speakers from the crowd expressed anger over the 28,000 jobs to go and the cutbacks to workers' compensation. Today's protest was described as the beginning of a campaign to get rid of the Griner administration. Just before more rain set in, the trade union choir rounded off the rally with a chorus of solidarity forever. I think there was plenty of enthusiasm at the rally and everybody was uh, of a like mind. They were united in their um, desires to get rid of the Griner government. And um, at one stage we'd cancelled this march and when I put it to the meeting they were horrified and um, demanded that the march go on again. So I think that's a pretty good indication of their enthusiasm.